Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, we are going to talk about the software development in Pega using branches. Before talking about Pega branches, I would like to start with software development lifecycle management. I hope you must have seen this lifecycle in many places. You can define a software development lifecycle at different stages. This is the standard representation where you can have six stages in your software development. It can all start with the stage planning where you can plan for your software development. So planning here refers to what your software is going to do. You can do a high level plan, involve the business people, involve the stakeholders and do a planning first. It can also involve in setting up the team for the software. Once the planning is completed, you can start with the analysis. In the analysis stage, you can gather the requirements for your software. Business people and product owner can actively involve in doing the refinement and gathering the requirement from the business people. This can also involve preparing documentation based on the requirements. Once your analysis stage is completed, then you can go to the third stage. It is the design stage. This is where the solution architects and lead system architects comes into the picture. They can decide the design based on the infrastructure as well as based on the application which you are going to build. We can write high level design document at this phase and once all these are approved, now we know what we are going to build. And then we start with the implementation stage where the developers and the lead system architect will be start continuing building the applications. Let's say you build out a minimum viable product then you can go to the fifth stage where you can do the testing and integration with different systems. You can also perform a lot of testings on the stage five. And finally, once your testing is completed, you can promote your application to the higher environment. At the sixth stage, you can also maintain your application. Once your application goes live, maybe you can do some incident management or monitor your application performance. Okay, now when you want to add a new feature, again, you can start with stage one, planning, analysis, design, and this can go on. This can be the basic software development life cycle. And currently we are at the fourth stage of implementing. We already created our first application. Now we can proceed with the next steps of starting our development work. Now we can talk about the development when we are in the implementation stage. Here we have to decide what type of development strategy we are going to use. Ideally in any Java project, you'll be using some kind of version controlling. Let's say we are using Git version controlling. There you can use two types of development strategy. You can use branch based development or you can use trunk based development. So what do these two development strategies mean? Here you can see the picture about the branch based and trunk based development. As you can see, there is a blue line that holds the source code or the master source code. In Git, you can have a master branch that can hold your central code base. Now first I will come with the branch based development. So if you are going to add any new feature to your software, then what you can do is you can create a development branch that is going to copy the source code from the master branch. That is why you see one line there as a development branch that can go parallelly to the master branch. And once you are into the development branch, you can start adding features to it. So you can again create another branch and start adding features. Once you are done with the features, you can keep merging your changes into the development branch, which is the parallel branch to the master. And in production, we run the code using the source code, which is staying in the master branch. So you will keep adding your development into the development branch. And once you are very well satisfied with your development, it is completely tested you can merge your development branch into the master branch so that all your changes or source code gets updated into the master branch. Here you can configure some kind of continuous integration in the master branch. So whenever master branch gets updated, you can start the deployment process. This is all about traditional branch based development and most of the development team, they may be using this branch based development. Now let's look at the other development strategy. We can call it as trunk based development. Even in the trunk based development, you have the same kind of base layer or your source code stays into the master branch or a trunk branch. Then what is the main difference here is developers, they tend to commit their changes directly into the master branch. There may be situation where you can create some branches, do your changes and merge your branch. But the main difference is these branches are going to be short lived branch. Now let's look at some common differences between this branch based development and trunk based development. The first main difference is 
with branch based development you can use lot of branchings for example you can use the master branch developer branch feature branch release branch maybe hotfix branch also and developer branch will be mostly like a long lived branch it means people will keep adding features and keep merging into the development branch only when you are sure that all your changes are ready to go to production then only you will be merging your development branch into the master branch but in trunk based development you will have master branch and you will only have some short lived branches in some situation you will not even have the short lived branches where you can directly merge your changes into the master branch the next main difference is master branch is not updated frequently as i told you will be copying all your source code from master into the development branch and then you will be doing all your changes into the development branch it means developer branch gets updated frequently only when everything is done then you merge your development into master this is on branch based development but when you look at the trunk based development master branch gets updated frequently it means you can frequently do the deployments when you use trunk based development the third main difference is branch based development can be used for large changes like you can have five to six features then you can keep everything into the development branch and then it also takes long time for code review and resolving the conflict when multiple people working on different branches with trunk based development you can perform small changes and you can quickly merge your changes into the master i am not here advocating that trunk based development is the best development approach i just want to give you an introduction about different branching strategies which you can use now let's get into pega in pega we have our own version controlling we can use rule sets to have our source code version controlled so we are not going to have any dependency with third party version controlling like git or svn and we know that rule sets will be tagged to the application currently we built our application as a two layered application one as a pega base product which is the base layer and then in the last video we created our first implementation application we call it as climbs app application that uses the pega platform as the base layer now to set up a branch based development you need to have an additional layer over the implementation layer you can call it as application branch layer as you see in the picture this layer is going to sit above the implementation layer it means whatever changes you do in the branch application can reuse all the source code from the below layer this is also one of the main difference between branch based development in pega and branch based development using git in pega we don't copy all the source code we just build a new branch layer over the implementation so that all the source code which is below the implementation can be reused by the branch layer but in git you will be copying the entire source code and keep it in your branch okay now that we created a new branch application layer over the implementation layer from there we can start creating branches over this branch application layer and the implementation layer can be treated as master so we will not create any branches directly on the master instead we will be creating a new branch layer and inside the branch layer we will keep adding branches so adding branches what i refer here is if you have some user stories to develop if you have some features to develop or if you have some bugs to fix you can create a new branch make it as a short lived branch do your changes and then you can merge your changes into the master so what are the other things you can do using pega branch based development you can do lot of things i have listed everything here you can start with creating multiple branches as i told it can be per individual story or per individual user you can have different different branches and once you do all your changes you can do branch code review pega provides this code review out of the box this is exactly similar to the pull request which we use in the git in git once you do all your changes in your branch you create a pull request to merge your changes similarly in pega development when you complete all your development activities then you can perform the code review before you merge your changes pega also provide quality dashboard for your branches if you put lot of source code in your branches from quality dashboard you can see if your source code is godrail compliant next is branch locking we can also lock our branches and secure our branches from getting updated finally pega also provides branch merging wizard 
with that wizard you can easily merge your changes from your branch layer into the implementation layer now let's look at some advantages and best practices of using pegas branch based development let's start with the advantage this is a common advantage whenever you use branch based development using any language it supports the parallel development it means different developers can work on the same source code at the same time both the developers can take a copy of the source code and do their changes only issue is when they want to merge they want to solve the merge conflict because if both developers do the update on the same source code then they should be definitely resolving the conflict right next is developer collaboration when you merge your changes and if you have some kind of merge conflict you can check with the developers and see how you can resolve the conflict you can also use the code review to have a 4i principle like the team lead or the lsa can review your code and provide some command on it once the command is fixed you can continue with merging your changes finally it's also easy to test as i told in the development environment you can create a branch layer over the implementation layer and you can do whatever changes you want into the branch layer by this way when you point your application to the branch application you can test all your changes very easily if you are satisfied with your changes it means like your unit testing is done then you can do the code review and merge your changes let's say you want to do a small change into the implementation layer what you can do is you can save the rule from the implementation layer into the branch layer then you can do the change and once you are completed with the change then you can push the change into the implementation layer this is one way when you want to do some changes in some existing source code there may be situation where you want to add a new source code or new feature in that scenario you don't want to save as any source code instead you can create your own source code and push it into the right layer currently we have only implementation layer but in real time you may have lot of layers so deciding at which layer you want to push your source code is a key criteria we will get to that point slowly when we start with developing some rules now let's talk about some of the best practices of using branch based development as you can see i mentioned two best practices one is short lived branches when i say short lived branches do some bell ring yeah it is about trunk based development in trunk based development they say you can use short lived branches similarly pega also recommends to use short lived branches so why we want to use short lived branches is when you do some changes and you keep it for like one week two week it may create lot of merge conflicts because some other developers may also want to do the change in the same source code so it is always wise to keep your branch short lived the next is always try to use the branch application layer so what i meant here is technically you can create branches into any application rule it means you can also create branches directly into the implementation layer pega do not recommend that pega always ask you to create a branch application layer over the implementation layer and then create branches only into the branch application layer if you create branches into the implementation layer it may have some kind of development work and if you push your changes into higher environments there are chances that your branches may also can get pushed so always use a branch application layer over the implementation layer okay now the final question before i end this video here is what type of development strategy are we using in pega are we using branch based development or are we using trunk based development i would say 50 50 we can't say we are using only branch based development and we can't say we are using only trunk based development we have a kind of hybrid between these two okay now that we know how to start with the branch based development the first step will be to create a branch application layer and from there you can start adding branches save your source code into a branch do the change do a code review and use the merge wizard to push your changes into the implementation layer this is what we are going to see in the next video see you there